Yep. Rob Kendall along with Tyler Bless, the head coach of the Plainfield Quakers. Coach, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Hey, we're great. All right. Well, uh, 1-0 and and hot to go. First of all, let, let's start with just kind of from you personally. What was it like on Friday night, your first game as a, as a head coach? It, it had to be just a, a flood of different uh, feelings and emotions. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was certainly that. I mean, obviously the first game of the year, you're always, um, you're always anxious to see what, you know, what team's going to come out and be ready to play and how you're going to execute on all three phases. But, uh, you know, this one was probably a little bit more, um, more special just because it was first time as the head coach, um, you know, kind of came a, a full circle for me because of, uh, you know, my dad was there to obviously watch, you know, our football program, but also kind of just watch me and um, had a phone conversation with him last night. And, you know, he's going through some of those uh, situations from the game and asking me questions. Well, why'd you do this? And why'd you do that? And it's kind of the first time where those questions were directed at me rather than uh, me directing those questions at him. So um, it was a great experience. Obviously very excited that we, we came home victorious and um, we enjoyed it and getting ready to move on to to week two in our home opener against uh, Lafayette Harrison. Uh, yeah, so we'll get to that here in just a moment. But first, you know, listening to the broadcast Friday night and it starts out, you know, you're down a couple scores early and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is like the worst start we could imagine. <laughs> uh, talk a little bit about kind of what's going through your mind, what you kind of are saying to the kids, because clearly you guys bounced <laughs> back great. And I think that says a lot about your football team. Yeah, I mean, obviously it was not the um... – the start that we probably all envisioned in our, in our minds. Um, but you know, that's why they play the game of football and that's why you got to go eventually and, um, break it down to the basic fundamentals that you, you were taught when you were in little league of, um, you know, blocking and catching and running and throwing the football. So, um, I don't know if there was anything that tear up South did that was maybe unexpected. It was just us not really executing the game plan. Um, 100 percent I mean on offense you know we went three and out and um got the ball the next series and kind of got some stuff going and then um went forward on fourth down um uh, it was past midfield but uh felt like we had the right play call we just we literally just didn't catch the ball so those are things that you just go back to the sidelines and say hey we just you know we're going to keep throwing you the ball we're going to keep uh, you know trying to find ways to get the ball to our playmakers and, and eventually you just got to trust your players. Um, and defensively, I think we just settled in after the first quarter of uh, made a couple minor adjustments on some, on some key guys that we have. But um, really after that, it was just breaking it down on the defensive side of the ball of, you know, tackling and getting off blocks and making sure your reads are correct and, and finding a way to, uh, to get them off the field. And our defense responded really well. And I was very pleased to see, um, you know, a shutout after after they scored their two touchdowns. You know, we used to talk with Coach Woodard about this all the time and, and with your dad when we did the, the Avon uh, broadcast with him, that you can prepare all summer long, but the speed of an actual game and even a scrimmage is a little different. It's just a different – it's a different animal, right? And sometimes it takes kids a, a while to get a quarter under their belt and go, wow, that really is different than everything we prepared for. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly a uh, a difference between you know your practice speed and and what you try to do in a scrimmage versus try west to uh, you know your the bullets are flying so to say and it's it's live and um, you know it's a longer game it's a longer um, you know quarters are longer obviously so you got to get into a feel I felt like we responded um, really well in terms of kind of catching our second wind I felt like that that uh, that's Really, it was a score before halftime. Uh, I believe we went for it on fourth and two from the two. Um, Hunter, Hunter kept it into the to our sideline. I felt like that was kind of a turning moment for us in terms of just um, obviously taking the lead, but also just feeling like, okay, felt like we've got control back. We knew we were going to get the ball to start the second half. Um, preached to our guys at halftime, like, hey, we're going to go out. We're going to set the tone from the very beginning in the, on the first drive. And um, we went down and scored, and that kind of – felt like it was enough to maybe breathe a little bit of relief in a way, but also it just kind of assured us coaches that, okay, our kids are mentally tough. They're, they're physically tough enough to um, go down and drive and get a stop on defense, get the ball back. So felt like condition wise, we were, we were a little bit better shape. Uh, obviously they probably have a little bit more guys that go two ways. 
but I felt like the people that we have rotating in on offense and defense and even key guys on special teams uh, throughout the night felt like they were in, in good conditioning shape. So that was that was pleased to see. Let's thank our sponsors that are making our broadcast possible this year of Plainfield Football, the coaches shows and the games alike. CJ's Pizza, Whitlow's Towing, Ganell Financial, Remax Centerstone, Julia Berberich, BGW Construction, Porter Hair Design, Holly Porter, My IT Indy, I-70 Record Service and Garage, and Ellis and Associates of Remax. You know, Coach, it's funny listening to that game and thinking about, hey, especially kind of after it looked like you guys were going to, you know, have a, a pretty easy path to victory, at least in the closing moments of the ball game. I was thinking about this show this week, and in a weird way, this game kind of had it all for you, which is kind of good. You had the adversity of being down. You had that experience of coming back, and then you had the experience of kind of dominating the rest of the football game and putting a game away. It, it maybe wasn't ideal, but it does check a lot of boxes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you'd want to win every game, you know, 50 to zero. That would be awesome, but that's just maybe happens – um, once every every year or if that so uh it's okay for us to have some adversity for the plan to not go accordingly all the time uh but i was very pleased with our really demeanor on the sidelines when we were you know down seven zero and then 13 zero there was not any panic there was nobody um you know pulling the fire alarm thinking oh no this is you know this is bad um we just kind of weathered the storm i felt like our our senior leadership was at an all-time high, whether it was on offense with our with our three-year starter at quarterback and the O-line that has uh, obviously, you know, returning starters on that. Um, it's harder for me as, as the offensive coordinator to know what's going on behind me when we're on offense and our defense is on the bench. But um, that's why I have a, a ton of trust in our defensive coaches to make sure that we handle those adjustments correctly and uh, get everybody on the same page. But really, I felt like even on that side of it, it was um, everybody was re really positive and just, hey, we need to settle down. We need to make some adjustments. And really, we just need to go play football. So um, I was I was very happy with um, how we handled the adversity, how we responded, how we were able to kind of close it out. We didn't really allow them to, to get a, you know, really give themselves a chance in the second half. Um, but it was everything that we needed in a week one game, um, you know, even with a later kick start and we got home late. So uh, even our Saturday morning, you know, routine was was good. And our, our freshmen and our JV team were able to um, get wins yesterday. So it was a great weekend for, for all uh, members of our football program. Let's talk about the offensive side of the ball. Anytime you put up 32 points, you got to be pretty proud of that, especially after a long road trip. I mean, it felt like, especially after that first drive or so, it was a pretty complete offensive performance, including the kicking game in which, uh, you know, you had some nice work there as well. So maybe talk a little bit about offensively why you guys were able to have such a strong performance. Yeah, I, you know, it was um, – I think it's always our goal on, on first and 10 or the start of a series to – you know, get positive yards to kind of give yourself, uh, you know, really the playbook um, on second down. So I was pleased. I think we were able to – I'd have to go back to our stats, but I think we averaged 6.0 uh, yards per pass and we were 6.2 yards per rush on all of our runs. So, I mean, when you're doing that, it's it's easy to – or it's easier to, to call, you know, some second down plays, some third down plays where – Really, we're just trying to keep the drive going. We're just trying to take some time off the clock. Um, you know, there was a few times in that third quarter where we punted the football and and probably maybe we got a little greedy on, you know, let's take another shot. Let's, you know, let's throw it here and try to, you know, maybe get some bigger yards. But uh, was very pleased with our offensive line. I thought they played very well, all five of them, uh, even rotating in a, a sophomore at center. Um, our tight ends played well. Uh, would have liked to seen our receivers obviously start the game a little bit, maybe cleaner in terms of some some assignments and some uh, alignment. But really, I I was pleased. But how they responded, uh, they made some big plays down the field. Uh, their blocking was really good. And when our quarterback has the ability, like he does, to to run the football, and then obviously the threat of throwing, that's you know that's going to make a defensive coordinator. Um, you know, be really stressed. So I thought Hunter played phenomenal in terms of just managing the game, kind of knew when to throw the ball away, uh, didn't try to force anything, didn't put us in really too bad of situations. And then, um, you know, I was very happy with our 
our uh, field goal unit. We've got Cameron Grimes hit a 38 yard field goal. So that's, that's huge for his confidence. And, uh, and then when our, obviously when our offense scored or our, our PAT, um, we call it a formation, uh, we were able to execute that well. And I was, you know, that was something that we've been really working on since probably late April. So uh, anytime that we have that look, we're going to, we're going to try to get as many points as we can and, they give us two and we get it, we'll take it and we'll, we'll go up. So, well, let's yeah. And it, it sounds like a simple thing, but we've seen it over the years covering playing field. Of course, when the Hagee brothers were there, it was like automatic from 50 in and what an advantage that is. And then there's some times where it's like, we can't even make an extra point. So it's gotta be as a coach, something that makes you feel good to know, Hey, look, if we get six, we're probably getting seven. And if we're inside, say the 20 yard line, we feel pretty confident. We can send a guy out there and get three points. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, you're exactly right. If we, you know, if we, you know, maybe stub our toe on a third down inside the red zone, we, we take a shot, didn't get it. Um, I feel very confident with our with our field goal unit and, and our kicker to be able to give us three points and walk away from a drive with with some type of points. So, um, you know, three is better than nothing. And we're able to do that on Friday. And then obviously when we uh, scored touchdowns, we were able to get, you know, that two point conversions. Um I think everyone besides maybe one of them um, in that in that first half. You know, real quick, and I don't mean to underscore it because obviously the first start of the game wasn't exactly what you wanted, but the defense after those first couple drives really played well and really kind of had a dominant rest of the football game. Yeah, I mean, I think they just um, – I don't know if it was the nerves or if it was just, um, you know, wanting to kind of um, maybe feel it out in a way. But I thought, you know, after after we gave up our second score that we really were able to kind of buckle down and just we made a couple different adjustments on on some things that we wanted to do with some certain players. And they w responded really well and, and got some pressure to the quarterback. He was able to uh, I think he turned it over later in the second half. That we got a strip sack from Lane and Drennan. I believe Blue Jettawalk recovered it. That set up a, a kind of a we took a shot on a trick play that didn't work out, but um, got a huge fourth down stop. So I felt like we we kind of just settled in. We just, you know, after that, you know, first or that last touchdown, we really were able to just line up, go play defense and execute. And that's really, as from a coaching staff, what we want our guys to do. Would we like for them to do it the first quarter in the first series? Yeah, but, you know, we're, we're also dealing with 16, 18-year-old kids that, um, you know, you just kind of kind of repeat a lot of things. Well, man, I watched that Colts Bears game last night. Those guys are professionals, and it seemed like the coaches on the sidelines were repeating a lot of things to them too. So, yeah, it's part uh, of coaching. Yeah. All right. So, real quick before we get to uh, the game coming up this Friday, which will be at home, obviously. Uh, you, you know, you're obviously a new head football coach, and we spent you know 15 years talking with Coach Woodard every Saturday, kind of about what preparation was like following a game, how you started getting prepared for the next week. Kind of walk us through what Saturday, Sunday is like for you and yeah. the kids. How much time do you spend on the, the previous game? When do you kind of phase into the next game? Walk us through what your approach is like. Yeah, and, and this past Friday was maybe slightly different just because the travel was probably long, the longest road trip that we're going to have this year. So, um, I, I want to, I think we got home at 1130 on Friday night. Um, I think I got home maybe 1230. Um, you try is to, it, it's like dinner waiting for you or how does that? Work? No, no. Uh, I'm, I'm really, uh, this is, I should not tell you this, but I love Taco Bell and I love fast food after a win or a loss. Um, so I have some bad habits during football season that I, I probably, you know, don't need to share, but dinner's not waiting for me. Um, but uh, no, I get, you get home late, you, you shower, you kind of try to relax, you go to sleep. Um, this past week, we, I, just, I just went straight to bed and you, I, we wake up about, or I wake up about 5.30 and um, we're fortunate enough to have Big B Coffee sponsor our coaches um, with two and a half gallons of coffee and donuts and muffins. So um, I picked it up at 6 a.m. and we go in the office and, and coaches start trickling in from anywhere 6 to 8 o'clock. And uh, we'll have a coaches meeting about 8.15. We let our players sleep in. Uh, we'll meet them down at the, the school at the field house at 9 o'clock, kind of briefly um, have a recap of the game. Uh, we'll have, have them have a workout with Coach Vanderbush in the weight room until about probably 10 o'clock. And then we will um, – 
you know, we'll divide up our staff because we have some varsity coaches that are our JV coaches. So, um, you know, some of those guys were not able to watch the film with their position coach because of uh, or with with their position group, I should say, because of the JV game. So we try to divide all that, uh, get the kids in film from about 10 to 11 and then have them go and support their teammates in the JV game that was here uh, on Saturday. And then, you know, as a coaching staff, those coaches that are not doing JV, you kind of can start maybe f finishing your last, you know, notes on the previous game from Friday um, and then, tr you know, really start to transition over to that that next game Saturday afternoon. I, I really try to, once I go home after the JV game, try to be a husband and a dad until, you know, our two boys go to bed. And then I, I open up the laptop and I kind of get some notes done for late Saturday night. And then you're in on Sunday morning. We'll have a staff meeting here coming up at nine and then really have the whole game plan finalized by this afternoon and be able to share that to our team uh, this afternoon for, for them to look at, you know, into the evening time. And then obviously we'll cover all that uh, in Monday afternoon meetings. So um, it's a quick turnaround. Like if, if win or loss, you know, obviously the loss is kind of, stick with you a little bit longer the wins should should stick with you longer but unfortunately it just you're just so uh, competitive competitively driven that you're just okay I want the next one like well what you know I, I felt that taste of victory I want it again like how you know how soon can we do it so um, that's kind of how I'm wired uh, I'd say that's how most coaches are wired but um, you try to enjoy it you really do um, and then obviously if if losses do occur, you you tend to work, you know, maybe just a little bit harder just to get back on the winning side of things. Uh, let's get thank our sponsors who are making our Plainfield football broadcast possible all year long. Coaches shows, play-by-play, uh, -play, they're doing it. CJ's Pizza, Whitlow's Towing, Gunnell Financial, Remax Centerstone, Julia Burbridge, BGW Construction, Porter Hair Design, Holly Porter, My IT Indy, I-70 Record Service and Garage, and Ellis and & Associates. All right, Coach, first home game coming up on Friday. Uh, a team that uh, Plainfield obviously very familiar with, uh, Lafayette yep. Harrison, had two you know really great games against them last year at at their place one went our way the one that counted the most in the in the uh, postseason one did not what does uh what do the Raiders bring to the table yeah I, this is the third time we're going to play them in 12 months and um you know each year they, they they've gotten better uh it's a really good program Terry Peebles is the head coach there he's he's done a phenomenal job with you know really K through 12 of getting that um community to be to be a football community so um Obviously, the first time we played them last year in 22, we had game film on them from the 21 season, and that offense was different than it was in 22. And now as you watch them for the 23 season, it's it's a, it's a different offense than it was last year. So that doesn't mean that he is just, uh, you know, throwing stuff on the wall and see if it sticks. He's, he's a really good coach, and he's got really good coaches that um, they're playing to their, to their uh, team strengths. Uh, what I mean by that is they've got three running backs just in the program that are all very capable of, of you know, busting one and, and taking it for, for a long amount of yards. So um, their offense now this year is a little uh, shotgun with, you know, a, a jet sweep and they're still trying to run inside zone. They're still trying to run the ball, um, but they're able to now kind of make it into a, a triple option threat by getting, you know, that second or that third receiver in pitch face. So, um, you know, last year they had a quarterback that was, um, I believe he was a basketball or went to be a basketball player at Marion University and he had some size on him and he had a good arm. So they were able to do some things in the passing game vertically. Um, they're still trying to do that a little bit, but now this quarterback is, is probably a better athlete in terms of being able to run it. And now you have to account for him. Um, so now you're playing you know, you've got to cover all 11 guys in a way. Um, so they do a really good job. They've got some offensive linemen that look like they could play for the Indianapolis Colts. I don't know uh, how they got to there and not to Hendricks County, but uh, no, they're really, I mean, they're solid across the board. Defensively, they're, they play very tough. They play very physical. They're very assignment sound. They're going to line up and, you know, you, you know exactly where they're going to be, but they're going to play very hard and they're going to pursue to the football. So um, we'll have a work cut out for us, but um, you know we're 
we're extremely excited just because of, you know, obviously it's the next game, but it's a home, home opener. And, and for our seniors, that's, that's a big deal for us. And for our kids, that's a big deal. So, um, you know, very, very excited about the opportunity on Friday and um, glad that we're able to host them rather than going back up to their place. Any special meaning uh, first home game? I mean, they all count the same, right? But this will be your first time of what you hope is a very long career of being in front of the Plainfield community. Yeah, I mean, just maybe the, just the opportunity to, to showcase our program in front of our, our community. I mean, obviously, the I thought we had great support on Friday being an hour away from home. And you turn around a couple of times during a couple of timeouts and, and you look and say, you know, we've, we've got definitely got the support from our parents, from our fans. Uh, from our administrative team, so uh, to have that on the on the road, uh, I got I got to hope that that's multiplied by by a lot um, being home on Friday night. So um, maybe some extra meaning just because it's it's our home opener and first one uh, for the season. But um, you know it's it's the next football game that's that is on our calendar, and we're gonna get our guys ready to to play and and you know try to execute and get a win. All right, Coach, before we let you go, about a minute or so, we uh, did this for all the years with Coach uh, Coach Woodard. I think it's important for you as well. Maybe a person or two behind the scenes at Plainfield football uh, that kind of make the trains run on time, that don't always get a, a lot of uh, a lot of exposure, but you couldn't do it without them. Yeah, I mean, without a doubt, it's it's our coaching staff from from ninth grade coaches to JV coaches to uh, volunteer coaches to you know our our stipend coaches here that uh, have been here for a while, but. Um, I have a lot of trust in our coaches. I try not to micromanage them. I try not to you know, tell them everything they have to do. I try to maybe give them some guidance um, and, and allow them to just go coach football and let me, you know, kind of send out the emails and deal with the other stuff that a head coach needs to. But um, very happy with our, our coaching staff on Friday night of just how they, how they handled everything in terms of, you know, maybe the start and then but just also – being on top of our guys about, you know, being overly positive, being happy for our kids when they made plays, um, you know, coming in early on Saturday morning after a late night. Um, they're here this morning for our Sunday meeting. So um, none of us are in it for the money. They, the guys just truly love football. They love being around other coaches, but also they love being around our players. So um, have a ton of, a ton of uh, love and respect for our coaching staff because they work at it for 12 months and, you um, you know, for them to get a win on Friday is just as important um, as it is for our players. So um, love those guys and, and uh, respect them a bunch. All right, Coach. Well, super excited for Friday night. I'll be out there uh, calling the game, first game of the year for me. And so we'll look forward to seeing you. Let's get a big win, and we'll talk to you next week about a 2-0 and Plainfield football program. Absolutely. Have a great week, Rob.